Hi everybody, I'm Rob from State of Art Academy. Welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to see how to make custom vehicles with Substance Designer. So let's start. Now, um, during the lesson we're going to see how to create a custom shape from reference and how to create your own node so you can save it into the library and you can reuse it anytime you want. So let's jump straight to the references and um, as you can see this is stuff we um, did in the studio. And as you can see, a coffee, a coffee stamp is uh, it's not it's not the same everywhere. We have different thickness, and uh, there's some drops somewhere. So we need to try to split the big problem into smaller problems in in order to to, to solve them. And uh, as you can see here, we have basically this large thickness. We have a medium thickness, and then we have this thin thin circle here. Uh, this is the first problem we have to solve. The second problem is about uh, the drops. As you can see we have small drops here and there somewhere. And then uh, this is not a solid mask. I, I mean it's going to be a mask in the end. Uh, but it's not solid. It's not full color. There's like a noise in, in, in the inside. Uh, the last problem is probably uh, the the the, the you know the stroke the the line around uh the shape is not perfect is kind of messy and distorted there's like a little bit like of you know um juggling uh here and there so let's start straight away uh let's go back to uh substance designer and uh what we need to do here is to make a new substance and we can go for an empty graph uh, we don't need any output uh this is going to be a custom node so empty is fine. Let's find a name for this. I will call it coffee stamp. Uh, relative to size mode, relative to parent, really doesn't matter right now. is is a way to control the uh, output uh, resolution from outside Substance Designer. Right now, we don't care about it, and we can keep uh, 20, uh, 48 pixels for height and width. This is something we can change at any moment. And the format, um, I'm going for HDR low precision, even if in this this moment it's not really necessary because this is not a height map, it's just um, a mask. So let's press OK, we have this new graph. Now, what we need first of all is to drop um, an output node. This is the last node, this is the result. It's like saying, OK, Substance Designer, this is what I need. And um, we can preview this node on the 3D view uh, by dragging with the right click, with the right click on top of the on top of the 3D view, and when you l um, release the mouse button, you can change, you can select what you want to see. So I want to see this in the base color. Uh, there's nothing in it, so the base color is black. Uh, let's start working. Um, it's a circle, okay? So let's start with the shape. The shape node is very um, is very important. It's one of the most used one and here you can see uh, the pattern you can change it to disk and this disk is too big so I'm going down a little bit with the scale and then I just need the thickness I just need the stroke of this disk so I um, I will go for a edge detect node and this is the thin stroke uh, we need another two so I'm just copy paste uh, this a couple of times and for the second one I'm going a little bit higher with the width and with the last one I try to, you know, um, exaggerate a little bit. And we need to find a way to blend them together. And of course we need to use the blend node. And so I can need to connect the first one, the thin one, with the medium one. And now here I need an opacity mask to, you know, um, mask one of the two. I will go for... Um, Ground map. So I scroll down until I find noises here, and here we have a lot of ground maps. So I'm picking, I don't know, something like this one, ground map number nine, and I connect this to this. And as you can see, immediately uh, I have, you know, some of the some of the first layer, some of the second layer. Um, I can also go here and increase the contrast to get something like more, like more contrasted and. Uh, uh, this is the result. I mean, it doesn't look exactly what uh, what we want, but for now it's it's enough. All right. And then I blend these. There's the result with the thick border. 
okay and I need another map this time I'm going to use ground map number four I mean it's also good uh, with substance designer to you know change your 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 uh, ground maps time to time so you don't have the same result every time or you can change the seed you can use the same type but you can you need to change the seed um, so here we are now this is this is way I mean too big so I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit and um, probably I can change the um, let me think I can use a uh, let me see because this is a way too visible maybe I can invert that yes okay so now we have you know a nice a nice big areas we we we, we don't have the, the 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 thick you know layer visible all around and this is enough of course we can go back to the to the edge detect and change the thickness so we have you see more of that of that you know um of that of that layer and now we have we have something like this and is not is not similar to what we need because it's too detailed we need something like kind of more more blurred than uh uniform uh, so this small trick is exactly what we need we need to blur this so i'm going for a blur hq grayscale uh probably it's too much right now but i can i can go down with the intensity and then after this we can go with the levels and uh, if you if you do this and you in increase the you see you increase the the um, the contrast between black and white this is exactly what we need and uh, i go back and this is something you need you need to do anyway you need to go back and forth in the graph because it's a non destructive software so uh, allow you to you know go back and change for example i want to change the thickness now of the edge detect probably I need to work on the three of them uh, the cool thing is about this you can if, if you want to see the result and work on some nodes before the result um, you can double click on the node you want the preview off like the levels right now and then you can go back on uh, and click only once on the other node so I'm, I'm going here on the the thick one and I'm going up with the thickness and see you can I can see the preview straight away um i can go back here all right all right and maybe even here in the the thin one and increase and increase it okay so this is this is this is enough and now as you can see as you can see from 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 the um from the reference um this kind of shapes are going inside the circle not outside the circle so i need to find a way to mask you know to delete this this shapes uh, from 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 the outside so um, how can we do that we can um, we, we have this shape right which is the original one um, I can try to you know before going for um, for a, for the blur I can try to subtract this shape from this one but I probably need to uh, do some um, thinking about this because you know it's not it's not easy uh, to um, make it right at the, the first time in, in at the first shot so think about this we have this we have this mask we have this mask and we want to delete this area okay so these area should be white okay should be white now not black and uh, we have a black uh, color here so in this case we want to invert with our invert grayscale the base um the original shape and then we want to blend this in screen mode or like uh yeah screen mode should be right okay you see now we just deleted uh the outside uh making it white and we can now change this and um, blend you know uh, put this blend into the blur and we get this result and as you can see now the outside is gone which is exactly what we needed 
I'm going back to the large thickness and increase it a little bit, maybe even in this one now. You see, it's always a, you know, a kind of back and forth process. Um, we can also increase the intensity of the blur uh, to get the shape we want, right? All right, now we are here. Let's stuff. Uh, let's think about um, the drops. Let's think about the drops now. In in Substance Designer, there's a lot of um, textures that you know we have that have like kind of uh, small uh, drops, more white um, chunks of of you know uh, color. But what we need is something. Well, I'm I'm, I'm I think I've, I'm going I'm going with this microscope view. As you can see, looks like you know. Uh, something you can see through a microscope and I'm decrease the warp intensity and I'm increasing the scale now as you can see here We have 64 as a limit for the slider, but it's a, it's a lie. I mean in substance designer uh, Almost every time you have a slide you can override that value So I'm going for uh, instead of 64. I'm going for 128 see you get you get you get smaller now um, Shapes and you can you can go even you know higher as as you want now these are i mean too much this I, I cannot blend these drops because you know it's probably you know too 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 there there are too many so what i'm going to do is i'm going for a level and if you if you increase you see if you if you bring up the black um the black uh, this black arrow you're going to clamp those values so every everything from here to here now is black and I can, I mean, I uh, contrast a little bit with the medium gray arrow. I like it. I like it. Maybe we can um, make it better um, um, in the near future. Now, we need to put these small drops around and very close to the stump we have right now. So I need a mask. I need to create a mask from this. And how can we create a mask? Um, we can start from you know um, from this one so th the 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 area where those drops um, will be placed is depends on the stump um, itself so from this one I invert the grayscale because I need a, ma a white mask and I blur again I blur again and uh, probably I will um, again put a levels because uh, these this area should be slightly bigger than the original one, so I want to I want I want to increase the contrast and control this the, the size of this area uh, with the, with with this with this levels uh, node. So as you can see now, I uh, play a little bit. This area is slightly bigger than this one, probably too much. We can go back later to fix it, but now we can blend, you know, the original. The original um, stamp with the new with the new one. Now um, I'm working with a black shape, so um, we need to invert this one because we don't want um, the white uh, drops. We need them black, so I will invert this again. I mask. I, I put this one here, and I put this mask here. And so as you can see, um, to you know, of course, we need to put this uh, blend mode to multiply because we need just to keep. You know, we want to keep the black areas. And as you can see, we have the drops. Now there are too many. Uh, we can change this by acting on the levels. Uh, like you see, uh, if you want to reduce that, you know, you can you can just you know reduce the mask. You can make it smaller or darker, and that's it. Now. We need to add um, kind of noise on top of the stamp because this is too strong. This is kind of a um, solid layer. Um, we can just blend this result with uh, a noise, with a noise map or like um, something like a Grange map. Normally, this is this depends on uh, the shader you um, on on the material you you have the stamp on because. If you have some like um, coffee stamp on paper, you will see the pattern of the paper on on that. It depends, so it's up to you. I'm going for something like I don't know, something like uh, Grunge Map number 11. No, I don't like it. Grunge Map number seven. Yeah, I like this one. So I'm going to 
blend this together and I'm going to uh, screen mode because I want to keep the white parts. I'm going down with the opacity a little bit. And as you can see, I have a nice, nice um, opacity. Now, a nice blending between the coffee stamp and the garage map. Now, the last thing we need to do is to deform all the borders of this uh, coffee stamp. And we can easily do that with uh, non-uniform directional warp grayscale. This is amazing, okay? Uh, this is uh, a way to distort your map using another one. And I will go for uh, moisture noise, which sounds appropriate. And I'm going to um, l link this moisture noise uh, both on the in intensity input and the warp angle input. Now, as you can see, immediately the the, the, the whole thing is, is distorted and I probably too much. I'm going to uh, add, um, I'm going to decrease the intensity. Um, probably, you know, this is the only time you need to zoom in to understand what's happening. It's, it's amazing. It works nice. I like it. Uh, if you want to blur a little bit the distortion now, this is probably the intensity is too 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 weak to see the the the, um, the tray length. But you know, in this in this way, as you can see here, you have a nice a nice kind of blur um, to the to the outside. So there's a kind of a fall off, which is cool. That's it. That's it. We are we are done um, because this is a mask. What we need to do is now uh, we need to invert this because you know we want a white stamp, and so at the last node is going to be the invert grayscale, and that's it. We connect this to the output. As you can see, we have an output now, and the cool stuff about let, let's save this, um, and the cool thing about Sapson Designer is that when you have one graph, then you can have as many kind of uh, instances of this graph as you want. So you double click on the empty area of the graph and here you, you have the random seed <coughs> and um, and you can you can change the number, you can change the random seed and as you can see, you know, this is this is different every time. And it's amazing. Now, what can you do now? Um, if you if you save the graph somewhere uh, like I did uh, you can go in uh, Edit Preferences, Projects, and if you go under Library, I already did that, so uh, I will not do it again. But if you press Plus here, you can change. You can you can go on your computer where you save that graph and pick the folder. And once you pick the folder with that graph in, you will see the path here. And if you press OK, then Anytime you have a new graph and you go for and you search for that name, I will I name myself my, my, the one I did earlier, uh, SOA Coffee Decal. You will find it here, which is which is amazing, and you can use it as many times as you want. And you can every time you want a different one, you can just change the random seed, and it's going to work. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I want to remember you that um, we have um, we, we have new courses, uh, new online courses uh, soon because of, you know, the lockdown. So we are trying to going online and we are we are going to um, have online courses soon. Uh, so please, uh, if you are interested, check our website, which is uh, stateofartacademy.com um, and we are going to release news uh, about online courses very soon. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, please, if you have any idea about new tutorials you want to see, um, please write them, uh, them uh, down below and I will be more than happy to help you out. So, I'm Rob from State of Art Academy. See you next time.